Hey guys, um, this is a video that I have been wanting to do for a while. I have seen a few other curly haired YouTubers um, doing this. I know Waterlily716 has a version, um, Shalimar Cat has a version, and I wanted to put my own version out there as well. Um, what we are talking about today is um, how to transition to the curly girl method if you are interested, and um, like what kind of products um, I personally suggest and what kind of tools um, you need just to get you started on the method. Um, um, now, if you're watching this video, I take it that you probably already know a little bit about the Curly Girl method um, if you're considering trying it. Um, if not, I will just go over the basics of the method first before we get into any products. Um, there are two big rules to follow when you're on the Curly Girl method. Um, number one is that you are no longer using sulfates on your hair. Um, sulfates are the cleaning agents and the lathering agents. They're basically detergents um, that you find in a lot of shampoos. Um, a list of common ones will be over here on the side. Um, the thing with these is that they can be overly drying um, really to anyone's hair but especially to curly hair um, because when your hair is curly it takes a lot longer from the oils from your scalp to work their way uh, down the rest of your hair and they are designed to basically strip all the dirt, gunk, and grease out of your hair. And um, when they do that, because your hair is actually stripped of its natural moisture, it can actually um, cause your hair to be uh, greasier, depending on your hair type, um, because your scalp is overcompensating. Um, basically, they strip your hair of its natural moisture, which it needs, and it can kind of throw your scalp and your hair out of balance. And they're just really not good, really, for any hair type, um, but especially for curls. So number one, you are going to eliminate um, any sulfates from your hair routine. And number two is that you are going to eliminate um, any silicone. Um, now, there's some there's some debate about whether or not silicones really are that bad for your hair. They can actually be very good for the hair um, because they, they kind of seal your hair over. Um, they make a nice anti-frizz barrier. Um, that's typically why they're in. And they can also aid conditioning because they, they stick to the hair. And so conditioning agents can kind of, they can help glue conditioning agents to the hair, if that makes any sense. Um, and there is some debate about, maybe it's an urban legend among curlies, that silicones can actually dry out your hair because the, the idea is that they form this barrier so that your hair um, can't absorb the moisture that it needs and that might kind of be a myth because if you think about it if they made that effective a barrier if you put like a silicone serum on wet hair your hair would never be able to dry because the water wouldn't be able to get through that barrier um, but what they can often do is build up on your hair because at least um, they are hard to get out of your hair without a really harsh um, cleansing agent like what you will find in, in a lot of shampoos, which we already talked about we're going to try to eliminate. Um, and so that can lead to some buildup on the hair and just because of the weight of them, they can um, make it a lot harder for your curls to form uh, their natural pattern. They can kind of weigh them down that way. Um, I know my hair definitely does not like silicones. I definitely get that kind of effect. I don't get the same curl definition or smoothness or anything when I'm using a silicone product. And so we want to eliminate these because we're going to be using gentler cleansing options on our hair as well. And these cleansing options uh, will not get get all that stuff out of the hair. Um, two other things that you want to keep an eye out for in your products. Um, number one are drying alcohols. Now this is not um, all alcohols, all right? Because if you look in your conditioners, you will, you will see a lot of different kinds of alcohol, um, especially cetyl alcohol, satyryl alcohol, and sterile alcohol. These three are moisturizing alcohols. They're called fatty alcohols. Those are not bad for your hair. I'm talking about things like denatured alcohol and isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol, by the way, is known as rubbing alcohol. Like when you go to get a shot, they put it on your skin and it stings if you get it in a cut. It's not um, very fun and you do not want it in your hair. Um, this is especially important for leave-in products and gels, products that you know you're going to be having in your hair for several days at a time. You really don't want those in there because they are going to suck moisture out of your hair. The other category that you want to keep an eye out for are, I don't really know, know if there's a specific name for this category, but I say like petrochemicals, which is, from my understa understanding, basically um, stuff derived from petroleum, like mineral oil, that's a really big one, because that just kind of puts a sealing barrier on your hair and it doesn't actually provide any moisture. Um, waxes 
and sometimes castor oil. Castor oil kind of depends. Um, the waxes are really hard to wash out of your hair and then the castor oil can be difficult for some people. Um, for some people it's a great moisturizing option but when you are first starting out on the curly girl method I would say definitely stay away from castor oil or anything that could maybe be potentially problematic um, because you need to give your hair time to transition to this new routine and see how it responds just to the new routine before you start throwing other ingredients on it to see um, what may or may not be a problem if that makes any sense. Alright so that is just a little intro to the method and now we are going to get started on um, these are just my product recommendations in terms of the products and we will go over some tools as well just some of the basics of taking care of your hair according to the method. Alright guys, um, the first product that you are going to need to get started on the Curly Girl Method is going to be a clarifying shampoo um, with sulfates. I know I just got done telling you uh, not to use sulfates on your hair, um, but this is kind of the exception and there is a reason to the madness that I will explain in a minute. Um, when you are first starting out, um, you do want to use a clarifying shampoo to make sure that there is no more product buildup left in your hair from whatever whatever regimen you might have been using um, beforehand, whatever products you have been using beforehand. Basically, what you this is one point where you do want to strip your hair because you are basically um, trying to get a clean slate to start over with. And you could just get a really cheap one. This is by VO5. It's the Tea Therapy. Uh, it's vanilla mint tea clarifying shampoo down there on the label. Um, Suave makes one as well. It's, I think, kind of a watery kind of scent. Um, just get a really cheap one. You're not going to use it very often um, just to, as I said, kind of get a clean slate to start over with. Um, and you do want to use one that is specifically a clarifying shampoo, I think, because that way there will be no other products in the shampoo that might possibly build up on your hair like a regular shampoo. Um, I personally was surprised at the number of shampoos that have silicones in them and things like that that you don't want on your hair with the method. Um, clarifying shampoos are meant to get all the residue out of your hair without really adding any more so that is why I recommend using an actual clarifying shampoo to start. Alright, after you have clarified your hair with a clarifying shampoo, um, the next thing that you are going to do is conditioner wash your hair, or co-wash. Um, this is just to kind of restore a, some moisture back into your hair. It is a gentler alternative to using a sulfate shampoo that a lot of curlies use. And you could just use a very cheap, inexpensive conditioner. Um, I recommend either Suave Naturals, the Naturals, we see on the label here, they do not have any silicones in them. Don't use any of the Salon series or anything like that because those are are loaded with silicones. These are a great silicone free option and they're very cheap. Or uh, the VO5. Both of these are very popular. Um, VO5 you can get um, for as little as a dollar or even less than a dollar some places. Suave is in usually around the two dollar or so range. Um, I have here, there's a freesia, there's a blackberry sage tea, um, green apple. I know the coconut suave is very popular. It's a little bit more moisturizing. And I also have, what is this, sweet pea and violet. Just some conditions that I happen to have on hand um, for some recommendations. Um, if you don't uh, understand co-washing, I have a video that goes a little more in depth with it. Um, basically what you are going to do is take, um, I think, several handfuls of a really cheap conditioner and distribute it all over your scalp. Um, you can add a wee little bit of water to help it lather and then you're just going to massage your scalp thoroughly for about um, a good five minutes. And this, uh, this might sound a little crazy if you've never heard of co-washing before, but I assure you it's a very effective uh, cleanser for getting um, oil and whatnot out of your scalp area. Um, basically, the, the massage is going to help lift anything in your hair and have it rinse out. And then after you co-wash, you just need to rinse your hair very thoroughly, again, for several minutes um, going through your hair to make sure that you get all the conditioner out. And that is really all there is to it. Now, as you go along in the method, um, for an alternative to conditioner washing your hair, you can use a uh, very naturally based um, sulfate free shampoo. I have here the Shea Moisture shampoos which are very popular in the curly girl world. I think especially among women who have um, drier curls, tighter curl patterns and whatnot. I personally like them too. They are very moisturizing. They are chemical free. Um, I have here, there's one with Shea Butter, um, Coconut and Hibiscus and then this one is a thickening shampoo with Biotin. Um, all of them have very natural ingredients like shea butter. I think all of them have shea butter in them. Um, coconut oil, very moisturizing natural ingredients like that. Um, I understand um, Diva also makes a 
um, a cleanser, a sulfate-free cleanser. It is not a conditioner, so I guess it's technically a shampoo, but I think they call it no poo because it doesn't have the chemicals in it. Um, that's, I think, is around the same price range. I know you can buy that at Target. Um, these are around $10 at most drug stores or Target, I know, has the entire line. Um, these are a really uh, good alternative if you want something a little bit stronger. And as I said, they are very moisturizing, especially the shea butter one. All right, the next group of products that we are moving on to is your, your rinse out conditioner. Um, this, the point of a rinse out is to moisturize your hair and also help uh, with detangling. Now I have some here that are better at one than another and you can use two different conditioners um, for the step if you like. Um, all right, I didn't put these in the order that I wanna talk about them. Um, the number one, the best one that I recommend is this one right here. This is by Generic Value Products. Um, at Sally Beauty and they call it the conditioning balm and it is a basically just a generic version of the matrix biologic conditioning balm it is very thick in texture and very slippery which is excellent for detangling um, I put this stuff on my hair you only need it a little bit because it's very thick um, I smooth it over my hair distribute it um, this is wet in the shower by the way um, you don't want to ever comb or brush your curls dry because they'll come unraveled and you will look like a line it's not pretty this stuff makes combing through my hair an absolute dream. It's absolutely divine and if you can get your hands on it, I um, recommend it um, as highly as I possibly can. It costs between, I think, um, six and eight dollars around there and it's a good size bottle. Um, I bought, let's see, it's, it's 16 fluid ounces. I have a bottle right now. Um, this is my second bottle that I haven't opened yet, but I bought the other bottle um, a few months ago now. I've been using it religiously and I am just now um, getting kind of down to the bottom. Um, that is an excellent pick. Um, if you can't find that, um, the Trust Me Naturals conditioner is also excellent for detangling. See, it's silicone free. Um, this one has aloe vera and avocado. I know there is a version with a red label that I think has some citrus ingredients in it. And then there is one that I have seen with a blue label that has coconut oil in it, but that one seems really hard to find. Um, this, as I said, has also excellent slip for detangling your hair, but I don't think it is as moisturizing. And it did at one point have a drying alcohol in it or maybe even two um, if I check the label now I think this is this might be a more recent bottle and I'm not seeing anything along the lines of that in there but um, just to be aware of because as I said I'm not sure if this is an older bottle or a newer bottle um, make sure you read the label because especially if you're going to use something like that as a leave-in you do not um, want any kind of drying alcohol living in your hair over several days um, Two other really moisturizing options are this one from Shea Moisture, um, which has raw shea butter, and it's the raw shea butter restorative conditioner. It's not as slippery as the other two, but it is very moisturizing, um, especially if you have um, a tighter curl pattern or coarser curls. I personally find that shea butter can be too heavy for my hair, um, but this is a very moisturizing option. I also have this coconut curlata from Curls, which I actually have not tried yet, but I'm featuring it here anyway. Um, this is also um, silicone free. They say that this is specifically supposed to be a rinse out, um, so I imagine it is supposed to be very moisturizing and slippy. Um, it has, there is a good alcohol in here. It is um, satirical alcohol. It has coconut oil and several botanical extracts, um, very naturally based. I'm looking forward to trying that and I will be posting a review. Um, for something with a little less slip, I have three very affordable options here. Um, there are two by VO5 and one by Suave. These two are coconut and this one has shea butter. Um, they are not going to be a very heavy duty conditioner, but if you just need a very cheap um, product to start out, I think that they will provide your hair with at least a little bit of moisture, even if they aren't the greatest for detangling your hair. Now, after you have um, rinsed your rinse out conditioner out of your hair, you are going to need um, some kind of leave-in product and this is what um, you are going to leave in your hair um, as you style it and have it you know sit in your hair for several days to moisturize it help the curls form help smooth them and seal them and whatnot um, 
so I will start with this one. This is again the Shea Butter um, Restorative Conditioner. I used this as a leave-in for a while until I figured out that I think Shea Butter is just a little bit too heavy for my hair and it causes my curls to come a little bit undone. Um, but especially for tighter, drier curl patterns, it's a great choice. Um, what I am loving right now is again the Suave Naturals Tropical Coconut as a leave-in because it's a lot lighter and my curls seem to like that. This is again a very good cheap option. Um, another one that is very popular among curlies is this Giovanni Direct Leave-In. Um, I would recommend this for very fine hair textures. Um, I tried it, I have a review on it, and I really didn't like it. I felt like it didn't give my hair enough conditioning. Um, it wasn't enough um, for my hair, but for a finer uh, hair texture that can be very easily weighed down, I think that is a great choice. It can also do double duty as a co-wash. Uh, I found it, it it's beautiful to co-wash with. It foams really easily. The thing is, it's much much more expensive than I think you would want for a co-wash conditioner. It's around six to eight dollars. Um, with the amount that you need to co-wash your hair, unless you are able to go, you know, a week, a week and a half, or maybe even two weeks without washing and styling your hair, um, the cost of this is going to add up very quickly. And then I am featuring the conditioning balm here again because I think it is something that could easily um, do double duty if you are, you know, on a limited budget or just um, you need to cut down on your products and for whatever reason. I, because this is so moisturizing as well, I don't find it heavy. I have used it as a leave-in a couple of times, not with my regular wash and go, but just um, prepping for an oil treatment and I don't think it um, was awful on my hair. So this is just an idea if you need um, to kind of if you need something that can uh, do double duty for you. Um, one more leave-in product uh, that I do not have here because I have never tried it is the Kinky Curly Not Today. Um, you can buy that at Target. It comes in a clear bottle with some hot pink writing on it. Um, as I said, I have never tried it myself, but I know it is immensely popular among curlies. I know um, Water Lily 716 uses it as her holy grail. That might be another one to check out, but it is more expensive. It's around $12 for a bottle, so if you are starting out, it might not be the best to go for because as I said you might be doing a lot of experimenting but it is definitely a popular product and if you are considering checking it out um, I would say go for it.